Okay, this is the beginning of a bottle three. I'm going to demonstrate how to use the uh, lofting tool in a little different way than we've done before. Uh, the end result of the bottle it will be this carafe type shape that we have over here on the left. Uh, where I'm going to uh, loft the top of the bottle and the bottom of the bottle and then create the label surface area at the end. It's a little different workflow, but we have this nice uh, kind of undulating flowing curve pattern up in the neck that gradually blends to zero down by the bottom of the bottle. So this is a different way we can use the lofting tool to create that effect. So you can see I have the bottle over there and then I have the lines that I created. I'm gonna sh show you how I did that. And then we can see this neck part, this half neck part here that starts uh, to show that curve creation. And then the, uh, the finished detail at the top, which emphasizes our curve detail. So these different effects uh, strung together like this uh, create quite a nice detail. Okay, so let's start with uh, making that curved curved shape. All right, so over here, um, I've created this uh, faceted part that I'm going to curve, and I'll show you how I did that. So under our shapes tool, we have our polygon tool. Uh, this I have, re uh, have reviewed in the uh, shapes tutorial. So this time I'm going to set the number of segments to eight, but I'm gonna put a pattern. And I'm gonna pick this first pattern, this zigzag pattern. So I'm gonna demonstrate that off to the side here. So we want this to be uh, two dimensional. So we're gonna do this as a, a 2D surface. And I have this locked vertical and horizontal. I think I did this. So this would see it's locking right up the top. So it's giving me the first parameters. And then I believe I'm just going to extend this out and it's still locked. And this is sort of arbitrary, but what I'm trying to do here is I wanna create a source that I'm gonna soften. And I'm thinking about how it's gonna be molded. So if I have my parting line on those two points on the left and the right, I'm trying to create this shape. So if I come in here like this, that can be easily come out of the mold if I leave it like that. If I start to go further, you can see those other shapes are creating undercuts. So this is part of that molding tutorial that we talked about in class. So I'm gonna to try to keep those points inboard. I'll click right here. I'll use my cursor. See this point here where my cursor is, is uh, inside of that point. So if you can imagine the front and the back of the tool, we'll be able to come off of this shape very easily. So that's how I created this, the beginning of this one source. So we have that here, that's a two dimensional. So now what I wanna do is I want to soften that and I'm gonna use our uh, curve creates tool. And that is this zigzag Z looking thing. And it's the first tool there, uh, C create. We've used this before on, on a few things. Again, I'm gonna uh, keep everything the way it is. It's nerves, smooth closure. And then down here, it's uh, the degree of curvature we're gonna have. And I leave this on two. So now if I click on this shape, it takes all those lines and softens that up. And we have this nice shape. So I can still see my moldability. So right here, my cursor is, that's the part I don't want to create an undercut. So if I have my parting line right where my cursor is, that's where the tool will separate. All of this can come out of the tool very easily, front and back. So this, this looks good. Now you can see this random point over here. When you do the curves create on a closed shape like this, it puts this one point, it's sort of in a random location. I really don't want that there. I want this very clean. So I'm gonna do this loft by only using half of this source and I'm gonna loft this to a circle. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I'm gonna trim split this shape and just use the front half. Uh, we don't necessarily need stitch. In this case, it won't matter. Uh, I'm going to do this with line. I have a line 
laying right here that I had drawn earlier. It's just a random line that I'm going to use to cut the surface. So if we go to our trim split with line and I grab, I'm going to select the front of this and I'm going to hold this and I'm going to trim with this line. It has now cut it in half and I have the front. It's still a closed surface. And you can see that by this gray filled in area. I only want the line. I don't want this to be a full surface. I just want that front line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my selection pick tool and I'm going to go to segment and I want to, okay, that's in the way. So let me ghost that. I have another line there. So I'm just going to ghost that. Come on, ghost, go away. Okay, so now I have that line. In the, I want to select this line on this surface, which is making this, Let's do this with the gray on, we'll see what happens. So there's the surface, it's all gray. So I'm gonna delete that line. Go to my delete tool, I've selected the line. If I delete that, it's not a surface anymore. So now we just have a line with this nice curve structure to it. So that's ready to go. So let's go back to my line top. I wanna blend that to a half circle. So this is pretty straightforward. So uh, I start off by just, you know, arbitrarily, let's see, I don't have my, that's why I have these lines here. I'm uh, using them as guides. I think this is on center. Let's check. So it's snapping. It's not snapping to the middle. <laughs> so let's, uh, I'm just gonna get, ghost that. I'm going to do my circle. I'm going to use uh, my uh, coordinates command here. Uh, zero, tab, zero, tab. That puts my circle right on center. I'm just going to bring the point off to one side. Eventually, you know, I want that to stay there. So right now, I'm just arbitrarily just making a circle. I don't know how big it is yet. I'm going to scale that later. So now if we uh, unghost that line that I had, we can also trim this circle, same way we trimmed the other parts. I'm gonna grab the circle and I'm going to trim it. And I have that front half. I, again, I wanna get rid of that line that is making that a surface. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna delete that. So now I have this half circle and I have this part here. So I strategically would like to blend those together to create our shape. So I want this nice curve shape to blend to the circle, but I also want it to blend in this shape that we have that creates the entire neck of the bottle. So you can see I have those, um, those two segments laid out here. So this, again, takes some time. I move these around, I'm lofting, trial and error. I have the two half circles at the bottom and then I'm blending them to this other reverse curve uh, part that I made at the top. And I'm moving them around and uh, changing that. So I'm going to bring these over now. So by these two shapes that I've created, we can start to uh, make this. So I'm going to get rid of, get rid of these. And I am going to select this group that I have uh, positioned. I'm gonna move them on center and, and we'll take a look at how this loft works. Okay, so now I have them right on center. And when it's illuminated, I can go to the fit tool and it brings me right into, into these parts. So this random little curve piece I have up here, we'll talk about that later. I just want to loft this bottle shape first. So like I said, I you know spent some time moving these around. Uh, this bottom curve, I made it the size of the width of the bottle, which looks like it's like three and three quarters or something like that. Um, and then I wanted to create the curve. So it takes a little time to figure out how to build that. Uh, but once it's in position, Again, it's trial and error. If I select these in order, I can start, start from the bottom or the top. We're gonna do a loft. So 
So I'm going to hold my shift key down and select these. And go to my tangent loft uh, tool, which is under the derive three section. So if I loft that, it blends all those shapes together. So what I want is from the front view, I want this nice curve here. Again, this is sort of arbitrary. I'm maintaining this narrowest part here in the middle at approximately two inches. It's a little over. Uh, just based on my experience, that's a nice grippable area in a craft style bottle. So I'm measuring that, checking that. I know this bottom part I would like to have at this like three and three quarters or whatever dimension that is. And then I want that reverse curve to come up. So by positioning those sources, I can get those to come up and create this curve. So here we can start to see how all that blends together. And what's really nice about this blending uh, with this, I can get those uh, ribs and curves to blend uh, what I call zero, where they completely go away down at the bottom here. So it's quite a nice effect to get that detail. Again, this can be done on an entire bottle. It can be done in many different ways. So I want to show this technique. Uh, here in this particular situation, I'm just building the top of the bottle. So if you look at this curve area from the front view, there is no detail. You don't really see it unless you uh, look at it uh, in a rendered effect. I want it to look like this, this little image over here to the left where you start to see those curves. So by doing that, I'm gonna create another, another surface that's gonna curve in, that's gonna come up close to where my finish will be, where my cap. Well, interesting. And by doing that, I can get that little curved area to be visible from the front view. So that's what this little curve over here was for. Again, this is a little arbitrary. It's a design detail. I am making, it's just, it's just a plain curve that I made. I made it a certain distance, you know, from this center line, probably about an inch, okay, not. So this is um, saying to myself, I want this distance for my closure to sit on top. So I'm starting at this point and I'm gonna curve down below this shape at the bottom here. So when I take this and revolve that and trim that from this other shape, I'll get that pattern. So again, I did this trial and error. I built it, trimmed it, took a look at it and see how it's gonna work. So it's again, it's a little back and forth. So I'm going to take this, I'm gonna revolve this source, uh, revolve tool. It's right here under the derive two. It's this uh, semi-circular thing. Uh, you can revolve any source. You can revolve it around a segment that you've created, or it will automatically revolve around this center line. So let me click on the revolve tool. I click on this source. I'm gonna do 180 degrees because I don't need the full 360 because I'm only working on the front half of this bottle and then I'm gonna mirror around to the other side and that'll guarantee that I have perfect symmetry, symmetry front and back. And it's also keeping my parting lines. So I'm able to constantly evaluate the relationship of these shapes with my parting line. So in this case, I will revolve this 180 degrees. So I'm gonna select my source. And you can see how I'm clicking on that blue line, it's turning red. So I'm telling it to revolve that around 180 degrees. So now I know I have a perfect circle at the top here, which is where my closure will come in. And if we look at this, we can see the intersection. This was the try on our part. I saw how that intersected with that until I got to the point where I like those curves. If I made this a steeper curve, I could get that to be curving even more or less. So that's a, just a, an aesthetic decision to be made. So now if I take these and I trim split this, back down to the modify tool, trim split. We had it online, but I'm gonna do both objects. I'm gonna trim split. I'm not gonna stitch. I always like to wait to stitch on my own later on so I can um, go back and forth and undo if I want. So when you do two surfaces, trimming one another, you need to select the part of the surface that you wanna keep. So I would want to keep this bottom part, not this little part. So I would not wanna select the object up here. 
because then it'll keep me keep that part and get rid of the rest. I want to select down here. And then I'm going to select my second object up here because that's what I want to keep, not out here. So if I select there and there, it now took both of those surfaces and they trimmed one another. And there is that nice reverse curve edge, which is the intersection of these two surfaces. So if I go to my select tool, these are two separate surfaces and they can be stitched together. Uh, we could have stitched it in that one operation, but I'm gonna do that later, I like to wait. Now here, we're up to this point on this image uh, on the left. So what we can do, I'm gonna select both of these. I'm gonna to go to my top, I have a line in there, so I'm gonna take this. I can, since these are perfectly symmetrical, I can rotate it or I can mirror it. So let's select the rotate tool this time. That's not, oh there, I'm gonna make sure I'm snapping to the center. See, there was a couple of, uh, since I'm only working with half the circles, there's a couple of snap locations. So to guarantee that I'm snapping, look up at our coordinates, up our X, Y, and Z. See how they're all on zeros? If I move this over a little bit and it's a little off, you see that one's off 40 thousandths. So very critical. Sometimes I'll even go to my line tool and that sort of uh, gives me a little bit more clarity. So there it is, I wanna make sure I'm zero, zero, zero. And I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna rotate I didn't need, oh, I'm supposed to do a copy. Let's see if I can add copy, no. Rotate a copy. So again, make sure I'm snapping right on center, zeros. So now I have uh, both top and bottom. We can, we can see our curved edge here, this curved edge. And we can even see it in here in the depth. So all of that can come out of the mold. So our parting line is right here in the center. So all of these curves come out of the mold. The ones in the front are easy. It's this one on the side where it gets very close to getting caught. It's going to come out. So I know that this is going to be successful in the uh, molding process. So, so that's the beginning of this bottle. Uh, I can take all these and stitch these together and continue working. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm gonna to start to build the bottle bottom, the body of the bottle, and stitch that to, to this other part, and then we're gonna create the label area.